Time for another stock review. This time we're talking laser. Not lasers like Star Wars, well, kind of, um, but uh, this ticker symbol is L-A-Z-R, Luminar Technologies. We are talking technology, sophisticated stuff, this. We like this kind of thing. Uh, and of course, uh, EVs and all the rest of it, we're going to discuss all this. But can you make money from this stock? That's the point. Can you make money? Can we uh, get our hard-earned money and turn on the printing machine? Well, we're going to we're going to look across all the numbers and see if it makes sense. See if you can make money from this stock. What is laser? What is Luminar Technologies? Well, in this review, you're going to see the most honest review. I'm not paid or sponsored by the company to do it. I'm here to help my members. My members can request a review. They can request earnings, all kinds of things. During this review, you're going to see a full breakdown of the balance sheet, the inside trading, who's buying, who's selling on the inside, a profit, a profit, a profitability score, solvency score, breaking news. We're going to look at the website. We're going to see how it looks. Very funky website. When you go in, look, it kind of like zooms up. Did you scroll down? Kind of cool, right? We'll look at that. We'll also look at the breaking news. We've got some executives moving from Apple, uh, Meta and Lyft to join Luminar. Interesting. And what is the company all about? All right, all that's coming up in this review. We also have a Meet the CEO series as well, where you can have the CEO on the show. I will tell you all about that shortly, how you can do it. But uh, we invite the CEOs on the show. We, we listen to them. We have a great conversation. And CEOs say they really enjoy being on my show. We've had many, and we've got many more to come in the future. Anyway, without further ado, let's uh, go straight into... Um, Let's go straight into it. So here we go. This is uh, this is Luminar Technologies, L-A-Z-R. Now, if it's your first time here, please do tap the like button. I will reply to all of my members' comments. Please do uh, subscribe and ring the bell. I'll be here for you. I'm here 12 hours a day. Yes. I'm the most craziest person on YouTube, TV, and Rumble. I know. Mental, right? Anyway, what is Lazar Technology? Sorry, Luminar Technologies. <clears throat> As you can see from the line chart here, nice and basic, from 2019, uh, we were going flat. Uh, looks like it was a SPAC, actually. Now, SPACs, special purpose acquisition, typically don't do very well. They typically don't do very well at all. However, uh, over history, they've not done so well. Uh, and... Um, it uh, started to rise, and all of a sudden, here in 2020, uh, well, we kind of know what this was. Uh, this was uh, COVID when everybody was buying Tesla. Everybody started buying this, probably uh, thinking the same thing. Oh, this is going to be part of Tesla and all the rest of it. Well, ever since then, it's just fallen away, and now we're down at uh, $1.30. All right. Anyway, let's read some more information. Uh, Luminar Technologies uh, is an autonomous vehicle sensor and LiDAR technology company which engaged in the design, building, and marketing of long-range LiDAR products that address the requirements of global automotive OEMs and technology companies for autonomous driving. It operates through the autonomous um, uh, solutions and advanced technologies and services segment. Let's see a little bit more. Uh, the autonomous uh, segment includes the designing, manufacturing, and marketing of LiDAR sensors, catering mainly to the OEMs in the automobile, commercial vehicle, robo-taxi, and adjacent industries. The advanced technologies and service segment provides semiconductors and related components, as well as design, test, and consulting services to the autonomous solutions segment and to various third-party customers, including government agencies, defense contractors in markets, generally uh, unrelated to autonomous vehicles. The company was founded by Austin Russell and Jason uh, Eichenholz, in 2012 and is headquartered in Orlando, Florida, uh, the United States. L-A-Z-R is the ticker. As you can see, Florida, 800 employees and Austin Russell. As we've got Austin Russell on the show, uh, Austin, we'd love to invite you on to the show. We have a Meet the CEO series you might enjoy being on. Love to hear from you, learn all about your company. Um, how we do this is the investors 
will message you. Uh, they will create either a, uh, a social media circle around the stock. They can uh, create Facebook pages or uh, Reddit groups or whatever. And I will provide the earnings. I will provide the analysis like this, uh, breaking news, and uh, they'll share it with hopefully with you and you'll get to hear about it. Or they'll invite you directly through the investor relations. Please then uh, do respond to them, the investors. I don't message you. I don't uh, try to sell my services. I provide this free of charge. Uh, I don't. You, you don't pay me to do this. Um, and what I hope you'll do is then uh, speak to your investors. They are very excited about your company and then uh, they'll put you in contact with me and then you can be on the show. Now, if you are an investor, look below this video and you'll find not only share this video to the CEO, Austin, but also share um, the invite the CEO video as well, which is in this video. It's below the video in the description and that explains the CEO how they can be on the show in a little bit more detail. All right, there you go. That's how it happens. Now then, let's scrolling on down. Uh, if we buy this on margin, it's regarded as very high risk, 100% uh, maintenance. So it's regarded as high risk, uh, very low volume, 9 million. Um, volume today is under a million. So th that's today so far. No dividend, of course, fully gross stock. It's losing money. It's not making any money at the moment. Negative 91 cents. Uh, market cap, 567 million, uh, 52 week high, 832, 52 week low, $1.24. A lot of volatility. Now, Morningstar, who I would not take any notice of, they're paid to review uh, the stocks and they're influenced. Uh, I don't use it for my investment decisions, but they are giving it a 54% buy, 27% hold, and 18% sell. What do you think? I um, don't use their uh, analysis at all, but it's, it's worth noting. The stock has been going kind of sideways now since 22. Last couple of years, we're just going sideways. Um, we beat, we miss, we beat, we miss. Uh, where are we going to go next? May the 7th uh, is the next earnings for this. So hopefully we'll get to uh, see the stock beat on earnings and start to become cash positive, which would be nice. Who knows? Anyway. Who else is, is buying this stock? Who are we in bed with? It's worth noting because it will give you a sentiment of the stock and how it trades. Uh, Alster, I know nothing about it. Quantum Scope, ChargePoint, Plug Power, Blink Charging, and Lucid. Now, these three I've reviewed. These three I know a bit more about. Plug Power is great for hydrogen, great company. However, uh, a lot of Russian oligarchs, a lot of uh, uh, gamblers and people that are trying to manipulate the hydrogen business, they threatened me. They came on and all sorts of horrible stuff and very aggressive behaviors. Uh, so the market, you know, this is uh, the sort of people that um, buy this stock. Not all, of course, some great people, I'm sure, invest in this stock. But however, it just means that this stock, because people that buy Plug and Lucid and Lucid, again, very same thing, very aggressive, a lot of shorters, a lot of uh, very unpleasant, aggressive people uh, um, because the stock is basically rubbish. Uh, it's a great car, but the, the business is rubbish. Peter Rawlinson's taken all the money, paid himself just to take it private. And, and the shareholders are just ridiculous for putting up with it, quite frankly. But there we go. So that means that this stock will be uh, volatile because it's in bed with some very volatile um very volatile uh, company. And we can see that if we actually zoom in a little bit, we can see it's up and down, up and down. Uh, well, like all stocks are, but uh, it's continually trending down. But it's uh, just people just keep trading out of the stock. Essentially, people tr keep trading out of the stock. Can it make money? I personally uh, don't like buying penny stocks. I prefer quality. Uh, all the time. I don't think cheap is always a good thing. Um, but there you go. Let's have a look at it. Um, this is just the start of the review. Let's scroll down what else we can see. Right. Let's go now over to the, the website. Before we go into the numbers, the balance sheet, the profit, the loss, all of that, please do tap the like button and um, subscribe and ring the bell would be very nice as well. All right. There we go. Fantastic. Let's go over now and have a look at what the companies say about themselves. 
So, enabling the world's first autonomous solutions. Luminar Technologies is revolutionising transportation through our LiDAR autonomous driving technology built from the chip level up. Starting in 2012, our LiDAR technology meets the demanding performance, safety and cost requirements to enable level 3 through level 5 autonomous vehicles in production. We are best in class in enhancing uh, driver safety, Wh whether it's driver assisted or self-driving technology through our innovative LiDAR hardware software products. OK, uh, this is the, how the website looks. You can see a little bit more about it uh, from seat belts, uh, airbags and now to Lumina. Uh, you can see how it works, that what it's all about. The way this is what the cameras and sensors see, of course. Uh, it's applied on trucks. A safer world driven by Luminar. Let's have a little look to the left. Oh, hello. Drag to the right. Not sure how that works. It says drag. Oh, there you go. Oh, I see. That's an unusual website. Look, you let you just sort of click on it and it's like a little mouse. Very, very peculiar. Uh, anyway, do you like that? I don't like that. I think it's a bit clunky. But anyway, there you go. That's just me. Um, scroll down. We're ready to roll out. Start of a new era. Very strange website, the way it behaves. <laughs> it's like, how do I get around this? Ride with the best. Volvo. Uh, so Volvo are, are using this, this product. Let's scroll forward. There we go. S-A-I-C Motors, they're using it. At Polestar, Polestar are using this product. Volvo, we've covered that one. Of course, not Tesla. Tesla have their own way of doing things. Um, they don't believe in LiDAR. Anyway, let's have a look at this. This is interesting. You might find this interesting. Just some breaking news a few days ago. Uh, Luminar attracts former executives from Lyft, Apple, Meta, Microsoft. Interesting. Let's have a little look down and see who's joined the team. Uh, a leading global automotive comp uh, technology company today announced two new key executive hires to help guide the company through its next phase of rapid growth. Dr. David Foster joins Luminar as the executive vice president of engineering. Dr. Foster's extensive experience includes executive and leadership um, uh, positions at Lyft, Apple, Microsoft and Amazon and other innovative technology companies. Throughout his career, Dr. Foster has su successfully launched groundbreaking products from concept to high uh, volume production, including uh, such iconic devices as iMac, MacBook, MacBook Pro, Kindle and Kindle Fire. It's always worth knowing the people that are working for the company because at the end of the day, that's who you're investing in. You're investing in people um, and, uh, you know, great people make a great company. Very, very nice. So we'll just scroll down a couple of the headlines. John Pinnett, John Pinnett uh, is uh, joining the team. Uh, he is uh, from Meta. Um, what was he uh, known for? Um, um, he was uh, all, all, uh, John. Uh, uh, sorry, I beg you. I'm trying to cut through. I'm trying, trying to cut through it, and um, it's probably best not to just just read the whole thing. John served as head of communication at, at Gates Ventures, where he managed Bill Gates Executive Communications and helped to launch his popular blog, The Gate Notes. Additionally, John led the Asia-Pacific communications team for Google and held various senior communication roles at Microsoft. He holds degrees in philosophy, history, and uh, theology. Okay, and uh, David and John are joining Luminar at a key moment for the company as we once uh, as we move to production and deployment of our LiDAR technology on broadly available passenger cars, uh, industrializing a complex safety critical technology at scale in the in the automotive industry requires a unique skill set. It calls for a special combination of businesses and uh, engineering excellence, which David has repeatedly demonstrated in 
prior roles as our technology will soon uh, be on passenger cars. All right, just a little bit of news there, but let me now go into what's most important. We've got an idea about the company and what they do. Let's look at the numbers now. Uh, can you make any money from this stock? Does it add up? So does the money add up? Uh, are we going to make any money? So uh, Jordan Smith, before you get your credit card out and decide to buy this stock, we need to look over the numbers. So do the numbers make sense? Let's have a look at it. Starting off, of course, with the intrinsic valuation. Let's do that right now. Now, here's the intrinsic valuation. Now, we need to note, though, that the intrinsic valuation uh, doesn't use a DCF valuation, so it's unreliable. Even though the stock is at 129 we are saying it's it's worth 240 base case, and that's undervalued by 44%. However, it doesn't use DCF uh, valuation. Uh, we can only provide the software for what's available, and then it's not there's not a, a great deal of information on this uh, stock, unfortunately, because of where it is in price. So there we go. Uh, it's, it appears to be undervalued at the moment, but we cannot use this as red. We have to go further in. So let's do that. Look at the financials. Right. Now then, uh, let's go back here. 23, 20 revenue, 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 24 revenue, estimate, estimate. Let's go back to our, la our last. There we go. December 30th. That's our most recent report we have here. As you can see that, look, um, we are 69 million, uh, up 19%. All right, up 19% on the previous range. Uh, nice indeed. All right, just there, look, up 19%. Now, this is an S-curve estimated through 2526. So the expectations are good uh, and the, uh, the forecast is good and we're up 19%. Good. Operating income. Operating income is up 2% and we're expecting that to continue. Nice. That's good. Net income. Net income is down 0.6, but hardly at all. It's virtually flat, but we are now expected in March when we, when we get our um, earnings. Hopefully, we're going to see an improvement and uh, things move up nicely. So that's what we're hoping for. Op, uh, financing cash flow up 26%. That's good. Seeing things go in the right direction. All these things are going in the right direction. Investing cash flow. Uh, is negative 4%, which is a positive. Uh, operating cash flow is up 8%. That's a negative, that's a positive again. So all of that so far, the financials is looking good. Things are moving in the right direction and uh, we are, you know, things are improving. So we like this so far. This is good. Now then, the balance sheet. Let's look at the balance sheet. Um, what we want to see is more assets than liabilities. And sadly, what we see here is an upside down balance sheet. That is a big no-no for me. We want more assets, more cash than liabilities. More's going out than coming in. Uh, they have uh, liabilities, debts, loans, whatever, as opposed to what they have in assets and cash. That's not a good balance sheet at all. That's an upside down balance sheet. That in itself is a no for me to buy it. If an upside down balance sheet, just I lose interest straight away. That is not a buy for me when we're like this. But of course, things can change. But so let's have a look. Uh, out of 552 million, we do hold some cash. That's good. But like I've always said, you can start a business with loads of cash, but if you can't turn the cash into growing a business, what is the point? Uh, there's no point. I could start a business tomorrow and say, I've got $10 in cash with no debt and my balance sheet would look great, right? Because I've got $10 in cash. I've got no debt. Brilliant. No liabilities. I'm all good. So you can make a balance sheet look good, um, but it's not. It's not good. We've got 321 million, um, but can we turn it into, can we make money from the money? All right, let's have a look at the liabilities. What we don't want to see is long-term debt. And sadly, we're all long-term debt. 718, now again, a new business that sets up, you know, this is how it goes. Uh, it was, but it's been around though, founded in 2012. It's been around for a while. Let's not get, you know, been around for a while, uh, uh, tw 12 years in fact, and yet we still have an upside down balance sheet and we still do have 614 million, which, is, which equates to, 
85% of our liabilities. Now, why that's bad is because it's not uh, outstanding bills or whatever. It's long-term debt. Now, long-term debt is is not helping the business. They've already spent the money. They've got what they, they've got the uh, the benefit from spending the money. The equipment they bought, whatever it is they bought with that money, they've spent it. It's done. It's gone. That they now owe that money, and they're paying high interest rates, uh, interest on that money. That's crippling for a business with a with a with an upside down balance sheet. Now, admittedly. You could argue 614 million in long-term debt, but the, hey, hang on, Martin, you might say, they've got 321 in cash. They can pay off their debts tomorrow. They can. And if they thought they needed to do so, they would. They've decided their cash can make them more money. Um, so let's see what they're doing with their cash. Let's scroll down. But I don't like the balance sheet so far. So, so far, this the financials look good. We're you know, everything's moving in the right direction. But I don't like investing in a company with an upside down balance sheet, lots of debt and all the rest of it. I don't like it. Uh, um, um, margins. Losing money all across the board. Uh, gross margins are negative, operating margins are negative, net margin, everything's negative. Um, and uh, potentially improving, well, in fact, it is improving, um, and it has improved. Uh, as, you can hear, as you can see, these are the most recent numbers in blue. Uh, they are all improving. So the business is moving in the right direction, hence why the stock price is down. You know, So do you see this as an opportunity to buy? Um, let's have a look. The uh, profitability score, 46%. Uh, it's not the worst profitability score I've ever seen, but nevertheless, it's, uh, it's amber. Um, uh, we've got some good metrics here, but the positive three year average return uh, ROE is, is, uh, amber. So 46%. It's not the worst. Um, things are improving for the company. Uh, we've seen much, much worse than this. It wouldn't take much more to turn it green. So it's quite good, really. Um, but anyway, solvency score, uh, long-term solvency, short-term solvency is good. Low D is good, but positive net debt is not good. Long-term solvency is not good. That's what I mean. 52%. Uh, so it's not going bust tomorrow. Uh, it's fine. It's got all that cash. If it didn't have that cash, this would probably be in the 20s. Um, but it does. It has cash. It's not going bust. You can invest in it and feel relatively confident. So this may be a stock that is down, beat up, and it does present opportunity. Anyway, uh, we've got 14% uh, on, the, on the downside for the lowest level. Um, 14%, excuse me, uh, which is good. That beats the SNP, doesn't it? And in, in, uh, on the lowest forecast, average is 324%. And look at this, a high forecast from Wall Street, 1,005%. Well, you might regard that the risk to reward is very, very good. We like the technology. We know it's in, uh, we know the, who the customers are, whether it's a Polestar, Volvo, um, and others, I'm sure. Um, senior executives move into the company to, to uh, work with them. Some positive there, um, things improving, uh, outlook improving. Uh, anyway, there's the competition. Now, you need to know, go and look at the competition because you'll see how um, how the competition is, uh, is shaping up. I'll give you the link to this software. You can use my software to go and check out the competition. And there you can see, you know, uh, what the competition are doing and see if they've got a better margin or, or whatever. There is always competition to check out. Links below and above my head later on in the video. What about inside trading? Well, uh, Luminar Technologies Inside have sold more shares than they have bought in the last 12 months. Uh, well, that's not good, of course. We don't want to see insiders selling more than they bought. During the last 12 months, uh, insiders uh, have bought $199,000 worth of shares and sold $725,000. The last transaction was made September the 6th um, by the chief financial officer. The last transaction was made uh, who sold 101. Um, the chief financial officer sold $101,000 of shares uh, back in um, September the 6th. Not that long ago, really. Uh, there, there you go. Um, and uh, Prescott Allen on September the 6th sold 201 
uh, sorry, 234,000. Um, so we've not had any buy-in since uh, May the 15th. So I don't like to see that. But of course, it's the what comes next. Um, selling off to buy back, who knows? But uh, there you go. That's the facts as they are. We've got a massive, massive short interest on this stock. That means we have good news, uh, like an earnings good news, good print. Uh, we've got a, uh, a very high short interest. Anything above 20 is excessive. We have 26. So it's very, very high short interest, which means um, that we can get a um, we can get a short squeeze if if we get volume. Uh, if we get high volume, we could have uh, a short squeeze. Excuse me, I'm just pushing down my chair. Uh, that's better. I was it was in the wrong position. <laughs> there you go. Uh, excuse me. So um, at the end of the day, we've got a short squeeze potential with. Uh, with high volume. We don't have high, have high volume at the moment, but a lot of short interest driving the stock down. If we get volume on an earnings, you never know. This could be a short squeeze, but we haven't got the volume right now. What is uh, the latest news? Well, we're not getting much attention to the stock. Five months since we picked up some latest media attention. Five months ago. Not a great deal of attention on this stock at all. Um, so uh, I'm sure that our uh, video will rank uh, very highly uh, when we put this video out because there's very little information. And you can see a little bit about the product there. Polestar, Luminar, Mobileye, integration, integrate and autonomous driving capabilities. There it is. But uh, Tesla don't, t I don't believe Tesla uses, do they? They prefer a completely different technology. They prefer the cameras rather than the radar. Anyway, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that's what I think is the case. Anyway, there's a little bit there. What about the sentiment? See, there's very little news, very little bit, very, very little uh, media attention at the moment. Over the last 90 days, we've had uh, we've had positive news of 35%. Over the last 30 days, that has decreased to 20%. The last seven days, uh, it's just negative or, uh, or, or, or neutral. And today, we've just got neutral news. So not a lot of interest on the stock. Not not that not many people paying much attention to it, uh, which could present opportunity, of course. Now, the last thing we want to do is uh, have a look at the back test. So please do tap the like button if you like this and subscribe if you want uh, more information. If you'd like to become a member of my channel, you can have a review just like this and I can do the same thing for you. All right, let's have a look now at the... Um, at the back test. And this is very, very important because the S&P 500 is regarded as the best benchmark. Most hedge funders, uh, managers can't beat it. And uh, there you go. So I like to invest in it and use it as a benchmark. If you bought back in 2020, four years ago, Luminar, that's in blue, you can see in 2020, it went berserk. It went berserk because it was a SPAC. I think it was a SPAC. It looks like it was. Um, and it was at the time that everyone was buying Tesla. Everybody thought, right, this is the, this is the, this is the future. Buying LiDAR. And of course, Elon Musk I don't, I doesn't use it. He's uh, in the cameras. I'm pretty sure of that. Um, and um, as we can see, it popped up for that reason, which is a macro condition at best, because we've had stimulus checks, We've got COVID, we've got Elon Musk, we've got Tesla. Boom. When we realize it's nothing to do with Tesla, straight back down and it's been going down ever since. So I've always said I don't like stocks with macro conditions uh, that are not likely to repeat themselves. Tesla, EVs and, um, and uh, COVID isn't going to probably happen again. So that's what drove the stock. So that, that catalyst is gone. Um, upside down balance sheet, uh, EVs cooling down, penny stock, a lot of debt. Well, let me give my final, uh, th final thoughts on it. It's not a buy from me. It's interesting technology. I like what the technology that the company are doing. We do have a lot of short interest. We could get a short squeeze with volume, but we don't have volume. But this video will get out and draw attention to it. But unfortunately, I don't think it's a positive review. I've just mentioned the technology and that it's out there. But 
I'm also saying that uh, there's a lot of lot of uh, short interest, a lot of negative pressure on EVs at the moment. So that's that could just increase. Uh, there's not there's not the volume. The balance sheet isn't good. Um, it's 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 improving. Uh, things are getting better, but uh, I'm not so sure that the te- technology is right. Um, it's at the point of uh, moving down into under a dollar where it will be delisted. Then it will have to be reverse split, and that never goes well. So I can't honestly say it's a buy from me. Even though I'm interested in the technology, the only thing that's going for it is the potential because there's no interest, no uh, media. It, we might be able to draw some attention to it. And Wall Street are giving it a massive, massive 1,005% uh, target within 12 months, um, which is very, very nice indeed. Um, so, you know, what do you think? I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, there you go. Click above my head. It's not a buy from me, I'm afraid. It's one for more, it's further research. Go below in the description. You'll find the link for Meet the CEO. I'd love to meet the CEO and perhaps we could learn more about it. Um, But right now, it's not a buy from me. Absolutely not. Um, So the link's above my head. If you want alpha spread down below in the description, uh, you can get a discount. Or if you decide for the premium plan, which is what I use, uh, you can get a lifetime discount of that. Over here, more reviews. I've done many, many reviews, way over 100 reviews now. And if you're a member of my channel, you can request a review as well. All right, that's it from me. That's uh, Luminar Technologies. It's one for research. Uh, I like potentially uh, the industry. Not so sure that the technology is the right way forward. Elon Musk doesn't seem to think so. Um, but... Um, it's one. It's food. It's f- uh, food for thought. It's not a buy from me today. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.